All right, let's see here. I believe we are live. You guys should be able to see Discord here and Unity. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Um, what? I, you guys should be able to. Yeah. I got it. Really. Um, okay, cool. I can verify that the audio is working here. Um, it's been, man, guys, it's been so long since some of you guys have probably heard my voice on this channel. Since Al has pretty much dominated and taken over on the YouTube's front. Um, but let's see here. How is everyone doing? Make sure you guys can hear me okay. So we sent out an email blast here to our community. Um, we're gonna get a lot of people on here probably, hopefully. But basically what we're doing is COVID-19 is here, you know, messing up everyone's lives and we want to keep people focused on um, advancing their skills and so we're gonna be hosting a game jam and I think we're gonna make this a file base only game jam so file base finally reached over 3,000 game assets here um, and what we want to do now is we have a team of artists waiting for work and we want them to basically we want to find out hey what was it that you guys needed to use in a jam and have them make that so we want to make sure that they're staying busy uh, and we're going to use this game jam to also award our community. So community voters, we're going to give away some cash prizes and we'll have information on that soon. Uh, let me see here. Um, <laughs> Adam says, just need to do the six hour streams too. Yeah, you know, there was a time where I, I used to do that. If you look back on, um, if you look back years ago on this channel, my wife went to Brazil for, I think, two weeks and I... I think I live streamed like 40 hours straight of just networking in Unity back then. It was insane. Um, I love doing that stuff, and I think I think it makes sense for Al because you know he's so creative and he can just build these awesome environments. I'm not sure if there's a lot of interest in watching and hearing the thought process of building a video game. Maybe there is for six hours. Um, wow, uh, La Lopa, I'm so sorry, dude, I don't speak, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's Spanish, I don't speak what that is, but my wife does, let me see if she knows what that says. Here, look at this. Is that Spanish? Yeah, I think so, but it's like a lot of slang. Okay, my wife says it's Spanish, but there's slang in there, so if you maybe say it without the slang, it, <laughs> she, can, she can do that. Magic. Or it's Portuguese, she says. Okay. We, we don't know. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what you're saying. Um, but here, I do... That's Portuguese, I think. All right. We'll get to the bottom of this. Let me go ahead here. Put that into our Google Translator. Wow. Portuguese. I think it's like he wants to make a game. Oh, he wants to make a game? All right. Let's uh, find out. Oh, we'll got this. Whoops. Okay. Um, detect language. Portuguese, I want to go from like English and reverse that. That's good. Okay, here we go. Teach me how to create a game. I want to create the best MMORPG ever played. Ah, oh, dude, you and I, like, goals aligned right there. Um, I was a massive RuneScape player back in 2002 and 2005. That's what got me into programming. I wish. Um, I, I've, I've attempted to create my own MMORPGs for years, guys. It's such a amazing genre and I recommend if you want to do that dude you should do that but um, it's such a mouthful to chew that you need to start smaller and work your way up to the ability to do that I have started an MMO RPG I think a dozen times now and I get farther each time but it's so much work uh, Space Lord says our theme so we're gonna talk about that in a minute while more people are hopping in here we are gonna be hosting a game jam starting literally right now and there is a theme but we're going to talk about that in just a moment while this continues to fill up. While we're on the subject of you wanting to create an MMORPG, I want to show you something super cool that uh, I think you'll find interesting. This is something that I have been working on. This is the last time I worked on an MMORPG and I got this far. So check this out. Um, by like still today, this is my, my favorite thing. And one day I will continue this and complete it, I think. It's just a matter of like when that's going to happen. Um, but check this out. This is the original RPG map idea of my MMO. Um, one of the most things like I'm most proud of is the team I was working with at the time. Super, super creative. We built this entire fictional world. 
Um, and what's really cool is I grew up in Atlanta. I live in Honolulu, Hawaii now, so pretty far from Atlanta. But I grew up there, and I grew up in a neighborhood, and what I did was I went driving around my neighborhood, and I took a street name and put it on this map. So every name you see here is all street names of where my parents still live in Georgia. So and that's how I came up with all the names of this place. But this was the MMORPG that I was creating. Super, super cool. Super detailed. And uh, man, I had so much work. But yeah, that is this. So definitely, if you have a dream to create an MMO, man, do it. All right, so if you guys have any other questions, I'll answer that. Um, for those who are joining, is anyone in here a pro member of Game Dev HQ? Anyone a pro member? Anyone have a Game Dev HQ? Does anyone have access to Filebase? Like, are you able to just select an asset, and if you like it, can you just download it? Are you able to do this process here? When you click this download and you're gonna go ahead and get this asset. Carlos is, or Carlos, you have a question. I'm new but not pro, awesome. Morgan's here, sweet, Austin, dude. Austin's here. Um, hi, Austin. Hey, Julie says hi, Austin. Um, Austin's a pro member, sweet. Adam Bailey, Bradley's a pro member, beast. Uh, old man Jim's a pro member, sweet. Uh, Bernard, I'm finishing a dungeon escape in Unity. Okay, cool, so you're probably on the the Udemy course for that, awesome. Um, is there a better alternative to the Unity high-level API networking system? So they're building a new networking system right now, and I think it comes out um, this year, actually. This year or next year, a new networking system is coming out, and we are already planning to cover content on that. Um, we have a, a what we call intensive training or epic course coming out using, um, using networking, but it's gonna use Photon. Uh, let's see here. Um, is there a better alternative? Uh, let me see here. Better alternative to networking system? I would say for now, go with Photon. Uh, sweet, Carlos Godoy is pro. Sweet, awesome. <clears throat> um, yeah, I would say for networking man, go with uh, go with Photon for now. You know, Photon is proven scalable. Um, I prefer using Unity in-house tools, but I have used Photon in the past. In the last MMO attempt I did was Photon, and uh, uh, it's really good. So, um, all right, cool. So guys, basically we're doing this stream because we are hosting a game jam and it starts right now. Um, and if I pull up, and I unfortunately deleted it off the community page here, uh, but we are running it from today, the 27th, to I believe April 5th, which is Sunday of next week. Um, and we are going to require the use of Filebase. So this is Filebase. If you're new to what Filebase is, basically it's an asset pack replacement tool or tool of inspiration. It's our Game Dev HQ asset store, and we just hit over 3,000 game assets on here, and we need your help keeping our artists busy on what they need to create next. So. We're going to be hosting a game jam using all of these different assets, and you'll see here we have, for example, environment assets, props. If we just look at the props alone, this is what everyone usually gets excited about. Um, you'll find things from weapons to rockets to beds to randomness. Um, just tons of insane stuff in here from sci-fi themed, whatever theme you're looking for. If I just type in weapons here. You'll see here everything that usually excites people is in here. Uh, and what we want to do is basically say, hey, we want to unleash your creative freedom and we want to limit you to using Filebase. And what I need your help with is determining what is the theme for this jam that makes sense to use Filebase. And we want to basically, we're giving away cash prizes to the community and we are looking for a theme. So. That's what this theme, or that's what this, uh, that's what this stream is about. So the cool part about Filebase is, if you just go to gamedevhq.com/filebase, you can download it and browse it, and even download a few things completely free. So if you want to do that and explore this with me, you're more than welcome to. If you look, if in the description of this video, um, we're offering a membership access to this for 99 bucks, and you can participate in this jam, and you can use all these assets that are yours to keep. Again, there's over 3,000 in here. Just click this download now, and then just import it into Unity. Go to Window and Filebase, all right? So what we need to look for here 
is I basically want to know, okay, what assets do we have and what do we want to do for a theme? So someone said theme could be quarantine. So I thought about that. I thought about things like contagion and stuff like that. Um, let me see here. Let's look and see what else we have. I thought about maybe infection, but I also thought it'd be nice to kind of get away from COVID-19. Like this is all that's consuming our lives right now. So what's like something else that we could use? Like I was thinking a theme of something along, um, you know, like a phrase, you know, but for example, like, but does it explode? Something like that, where its interpretation is up to the end user, you know? Um, cool, thanks fake Nate. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. So I'm gonna basically just go through, look at some file-based assets here, and see if we can get some inspiration on a theme for this thing. So again, this is gonna be a file-based only game jam. Um, we are gonna have cash prizes, and we want people using this so that we can basically find out what are people able to do with this tool, and then what are they missing? We wanna know what assets they, they couldn't get a hold of so that we can basically have our artists put those assets in here. So here, going through, you can see here we have a lot of non-gaming stuff, which is pretty cool, just for kind of like environment and set design, just like random props, uh, which is really powerful if you've ever watched one of our streams with Al, where he's on here for like six hours at a time, uh, just building out insane levels, uh, which, by the way, are on here. So if you actually go to, uh, we have the environments that Al does live, they're all here. So here's the RE2 level that he built live, and you can just download that and it's ready to go. Um, he did a PT hallway demo that was like insanely good. Um, you can see here, like it's just insanely creepy and amazing. And you just download that. Um, we have some zombie lands here. It's part of our free zombie course. We have an alien invasion level. Uh, we got some pumpkin and goblins environments here. Bloodborne, if you ever played that game, he built that environment. Um, and just really cool stuff to get you going. We have a whole haunted house with interior elements and stuff like that. So it's pretty neat, uh, all the cool stuff. And if you ever want to watch those come to life, just check us out on YouTube and Game of Itch, live streams on Tuesday. Uh, let's see here, Preacher DHM says Future Tech. Yeah, Future Tech could be a cool one. So for example, if we look at all assets here, and these all assets here, see it says 1,049. That's 1,049 asset packs. So many of these assets come with more than one item. Some come with two or three. Some come with 15 to 20 different items. So that's how we get to over 3,000 game assets in here. Um, future tech, that's a good one. So what if I just type in tech? Let me see what pops up. So here we have a sci-fi machine and a laptop. But if we actually type in, for example, sci-fi, we have a ton of sci-fi themed elements. So we could do sci-fi, could do tech, um, maybe futuristic. You can see here we got whole corridor pieces, sci-fi terminals. Um, let's continue exploring. Someone throw out another theme. What is the theme you want to see if we have? Escape. Okay, escape is good. I wonder what happens if I just type in escape here. So we have a fire escape and a guard night. That's from our dungeon escape. Um, let me see here. Escape would be good because you have, you know, you got your weapons and stuff, right? You got axes and stuff. Like, you gotta break your way out or something. Got a bunch of different axes here. What else we got? Let's see, what are some interesting themes that we could check to see? Do we have a handful of assets for? Um, you know, speaking of like roads, for example. Everything related to roads, cars, vehicles, we have all that fun stuff. Um, let me see what we got. Let's see what particles are in here. So particles, we got explosions, fog, muzzle flash, touch, flame, blood splatters. And we'll be populating more of these as we as we go on. These will get popular. I think we're about to hire on a, a VFX guy who's just going to focus purely on VFX soon. It's going to be awesome. Uh, well, yes, but actually no. Interesting. Um, Fake Nate said fishing. Uh, fishing, that's a good one. I don't think we have any fish-related things here. We definitely got some requests for like aqua and aqu aquatics and aquarium type stuff. Um, yeah, I don't think we have anything marine-wise, right? 
Yeah, I don't think so. That's a go. I'm gonna go and make a note of that for Al that we should prioritize some marine stuff. Uh, let's see. Well, yes, but actually no. So, from a theme perspective, what could you build around? Well, yes, but actually no. That's a good question. Um, if you guys are just tuning in here, we are just exploring Filebase and um, we're basically deciding on what theme would allow you to make your game using our assets on Filebase so that we can have our artists create more amazing assets and have a production line uh, ready to go for this. Is there a way to donate assets to Filebase? So we do not accept donations to assets. We actually have a team of artists that we pay to create all of these assets. You can see here that all of our assets are consistent among quality. Um, and the reason for that is so that we can basically get to a limit that we want, and then we're gonna duplicate everything across different genres. So if you have, if you're interested in being commissioned for art, um, you're more than welcome to send Al an email and we will check it out. Um, but we do have six people that we work with who build all of the art assets you see here. Uh, let's see here. Um, balance and peace. That's interesting. Uh, like weapons don't make a change, but something else. Oh, like weapons don't... Oh, okay, like weapons don't make damage, but something else. Interesting. That's a cool theme, actually. Not bad. Well, yes, but actually no. Um... What other ideas we got? You know, in the past we've done some like really just simple ones. For example, you know, we did like teleport, we did explode, we did countdown. Um, I think a play on words or phrases would be really cool. Um, let's go ahead here. Let's just explore Filebase and see what we have. So I'm just gonna go through and look at these. We got a bunch of paintings and a lot of doors. Got some missiles and rockets here. Got a cave system. What is that? Huh, interesting, I wonder, oh, dude, hold on. Is this a cave system to be able to create like like a, um, what's it called, a procedural dungeon? I think so, let's download this. Um, yeah, and if you're new guys, so the way Filebase works is with a subscription to Filebase, we add 20 to 40 new game assets each week. If you like an asset, you just download it. If you downloaded it with an active subscription, it's yours to keep. You can use it commercial or personally, whatever you want, no royalties. Um, and your membership is good for an entire year. It's $99. You can sign up using COVID-19 right now. And once you download an asset, the coolest part about this is that we just maintain it for you. So if there's ever an update to it, um, you'll know. For example, you can go to this downloads tab. Here's the assets I've downloaded. I can locate my sci-fi and it highlights yellow. I can locate my cave system and it highlights over here for me. So cave system, sci-fi, and then once you like it, you just, that's it. So I want to look at this because I did not know we had this. And if that's the case, I think we have a pro workshop planned for creating a uh, dungeon, uh, a type of dungeon whatever they're called, I'm blanking on the name. Uh, let me see what other questions you guys got coming in here. Uh, time to change. Okay, time to change is an interesting one. Give me a game idea for time to change. What assets do you see in Filebase that we could use? Ha, <laughs> COVID-20. Um, yeah, so you could actually create a procedural dungeon it looks like with this. So let's actually check that out real quickly. It looks like these are actually environment assets. So if I just take the FBX here, Oh, dude, you totally could. Yes, wow, we are gonna be creating, yeah, we're gonna create some awesome content with this. So basically, Al created something that allows you to create procedural dungeons easily using this. So we have a bunch of cave caverns here. Let's check out this one. And all assets with Filebase guys, they're just ready to go. You just drag them in. You don't have to worry about materials and textures and lightweight render pipelines, all that. It's ready for all of them. You just drag them in and they work. Uh, this is beyond cool, and I think we're going to create content with this. Wow, that's awesome. All right, let's go ahead here. What assets do you guys want to take a look at? Give me some theme ideas. We are running a game jam that starts right now, and it's contingent on a theme that we discuss right now. And then after we come up with that theme, there's going to be a mailing that gets sent out to everyone that is interested in participating in this. We are giving away cash prizes to everyone that participates. This is a file-based only game jam. Um, which means you have to use these assets so that we know what we're missing from this store to complete these games. 
Um, where do you submit? Uh, that will be out in the mailing. So when you sign up, you'll have all the info about submission. You will be submitting through itch.io or GameJolt. Hey, what's up, fanboat? Uh, yeah, Dungeon Generator, Coding with Unity, thank you. Dungeon Generator, Procedurally Generated Dungeons. Um, yeah, we're gonna be doing some cool stuff with that. Uh, I think just assets, that's pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, shelter in Place. Ooh, that's a cool one, CG Cowboy. Shelter in Place, let's just type in like shelter here. So we got sheds, we got army tents, army tents. Uh, let's continue going through. I know for shelter, for example, like we got all these hospital rooms, we got abandoned buildings. I mean, look at the environments, guys. Like if you go into environments, let's go into urban. Um, you'll see here we got tons of stuff that you could build, including a lot of ready-made pieces to create. Just like who knows what type of worlds. Building six, building seven. Uh, tons of awesome stuff. If we go to all of the environments, um, you'll see here we got city skylines. Like here, we played like city skylines, made in Unity, by the way. Um, we can create something like that. We got all these medieval style ones. Got this. Uh, some sci-fi stuff. Let's keep looking through here. Got some train tracks. I don't think we have a train yet. Uh, we got a rusty pipes we could be working with. There's a bunch of cool shit in here. Uh, let's see. If I go to... Gosh, let's check out some of the characters. So one of the things Al has been focusing on recently is a lot of characters. And what's cool with all these characters is you can kind of like... You can just put them into Mixamo and give them whatever animation you want, which is pretty awesome. Sweet. Yeah, check out these guys. Wow. All right, let's see what this guy looks like. Let's go ahead and put that in here. That's like a weird cyborg alien. Uh, let me see here. How long will this jam be for? So this game jam goes from today till Sunday, April 5th. So the theme is dependent on what we decide right now during this live stream. So we'll be on here as long as it takes to fill this live stream out. We're going to be exploring Filebase, answering questions about Filebase, and showing it off to you guys. This jam, we are giving away cash prizes for the winners of this, but you have to use Filebase to participate in this game jam. So check this out. I just downloaded this. I'm going to go to my downloads here. I'm just going to click on this uh, simple locate. And let's see here. Go to my scene. And let's put that FBX in here and see what this guy looks like. Nice. Check that out. That guy is pretty dope. I don't even know what it is. It's like his face is a grenade or something. Alright, very cool. So this guy, I believe, this is just the rig. I don't think it comes with any animations yet because we're supposed to take it and put it into Mixamo and give it whatever animations we want, which is pretty awesome. Eventually, I think we will have our own animation library of like recommended Mixamo things, but that's going to be later on. Uh, let me see here. Um, Austin McCrow, explosions. Yeah, so we did explosions in the past. Explosions is always fun. We have tons of things that we can break. We have tons of particle effects around explosions. My favorite is just creating a rocket explosion, which is like my favorite thing to demonstrate. Um, so I'm going to show you guys that actually right now while you guys keep thinking of theme ideas. And if you want to download Filebase and check out what assets are there, uh, just go to gamedevhq.com slash Filebase. You can download it. Go through and look at assets. We're going to go through more and see what we like and see what themes we can think about by looking at these assets. Um, but one of the coolest things that I can demo for you with Filebase is how easy it is to use. Uh, so check this out. We're going to create an exploding... Um, we're just going to create an explosion. And basically we're going to have it fire a rocket. So I'm going to basically have this rocket turret. So if I type in rocket here under all assets, we have this sci-fi missile. I'm going to go ahead and download that. Watercraft. Yeah, we don't have a lot of watercraft stuff. I need to talk to Al about getting some boats in here. Uh, belt money we're all getting from the government to get a pro membership. Could the theme be government? <laughs> Not a bad theme. Uh, the pro membership, though, definitely worth it. Uh, you can ask any of our pro members. They'll tell you that all the benefits that we do weekly for you guys and all the assets that are there to inspire you to create is well worth it. Uh, let's see here. Light is dark and dark is light. Oh, that's an interesting one. 
what assets specifically in Filebase would you use around that theme? Hey John, would this stream be up to view later? Yeah, it's gonna be on our YouTube channel. We're not taking it down. So if you wanna view this later, you're more than welcome to. All right, so here, check this out, guys. We're gonna download this sci-fi missile turret. So once that's imported, it's then gonna go into our asset management system. And we can simply click on this locate. Once it's done, sorry, this is a heavy asset. I may actually need for this asset specifically, I may need the lightweight render pipeline or the universal render pipeline. So I may need to update that, but we'll see. We shall see. Or actually I'm gonna probably do that anyways because the graphics are gonna look so much better with this. All right, so check it out. So the reason why this uh, probably refreshed here on us is because there is a script attached to this. So some of our assets come with pre-made scripts, which is pretty awesome, and they're easily extensible. So for example, let's go to our downloads here and locate the turret down here. So an out added a new one, it looks like. Sci-Fi Turret 7, what is that one? Hold on, what is this one? Oh, did I download 7 or that came with this? Oh, okay, I downloaded that, Never mind. Um, all right, so check this out. I'm gonna hop into this demo here. And uh, inside of here, we actually have our rocket. And if we look at our game view, which is down here, Wow, what just happened? Hold on. All right, so check this out. Uh, basically what we can do is I can press key, uh, the space key and it's gonna fire off some rockets. So in order for this to work, I hit space, there's my rockets, and they go off into the distance. Now one of the things that's really cool about this thing is that it's automatically coded for you how to create a heat seeking system. And if you ever wanted to learn how this script works, you can open it up, every script we ever release is commented every single line so if you're new to coding you can learn it if you're a designer if you need to extend it uh, you can do that you'll see here here's the code for this pre-defined asset and everything has a comment on it and everything's really easy to use so for example on this missile launcher here i want to basically destroy a box so check this out i'm going to go to my missile launcher here and we're going to create a box next to it so i'm going to go ahead here we're going to create a 3d object and I'm just gonna position that like right here behind it, right here. All right, and you know how like that iconic arch of, an, of a missile? Uh, that's what I'm going for here. Um, so and here's how easy it is to get that. So I'm gonna click on the missile launcher and I'm gonna change it to homing missile. I'm gonna assign it a target, which is this cube. And then once I do that, um, here, I wanna show you this. So check it out. I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm gonna fire this off and it already destroys it. And what's really cool about that is it automatically looks for other assets that we would have downloaded. So for example, you saw how it played that explosion effect. Well, that explosion effect is from our file-based VFX particle and all of our scripts will look for other scripts that it works with automatically for you uh, in file-based. So it's really, really awesome. It doesn't require a lot of work. You saw I was able to set that up in literally like 10 seconds here. Um, if I upgraded to the universal render pipeline, it would be much cooler, but let me go ahead here. Check this out. Let's go ahead here. Uh, go back to homing missile target. We're going to give it that cube and I'm going to create a few of these so you can see how the rest of this works. Let's go and position these guys over here, here. All right. And then I believe, actually, we're gonna have to modify this to look for other targets, most likely. But let's see here. And I'm pretty sure we do. I don't think it's automatically looking for targets, but we can check. All right, so clicking on our rocket, we can give it a target. All right, and then let's go ahead and play this. It's in homing, and we'll go ahead and launch it. All right, I hit fire, boom, you get that iconic arch and it blows up, awesome. And then the rest of them go straight. So the reason for that is because if you look in the script here, it doesn't know what to do after it destroys the target. It's null, so it just keeps going. We could write some simple logic though that says, hey, find any cube and target that one next. Uh, and I think we'll write that out. But first, let me check the comments here. Uh, are there any 2D assets in Filebase? So we are gonna tackle 2D. Right now we're focusing on 3D and 3D animations but we will be getting to 2D later on. 
Yeah, I mean, when it comes to 2D, you're going to find some textures and decals, but for the most part, we're focusing on 3D and animation right now. Uh, toilet paper fortress. Yeah, toilet paper themes could be good. Actually, I think we may have some toilet paper. Let me check that uh, before we do some coding in this. Because uh, Is everyone here a programmer? Is there anyone watching this stream right now that doesn't actually write code and is more interested in what Al does, which is like level design and game design? Let me see here. If we type, um, let's look at file base. Let's see if we have any toilet paper in here. I write code in basic. All right, cool. Both, good deal. All right, let me see here. Um, toilet. Oh, we do, guys. Check that out. We have toilet paper support and toilet paper, and we give you two forms of support. Um, that is awesome. So yes, you can get some toilet paper in your game. That's actually not a bad idea. So far, I'm going to say that is a winning theme selection right there. TP. Do something. Maybe it's like a gun that shoots the toilet paper. And like, I don't know if we have a mummy or something like that, but you could like mummify things. That'd be pretty cool. Or you can make a shader that like wraps up. Uh, mainly coded but working on learning. I've got a little dungeon generator that I'm working on coding. Yeah, Tom Fox's dungeon generator is sick. Um, same, trying to tackle both programming and design. People call it a unicorn position. <laughs> Murder TP hordes, hoarders, yes. All right, so check this out. I actually do want to program this in real quickly. It's been quite a while since I've done anything here. Um, let's open up our missile launcher and we need to find out where that target becomes null. So I'm gonna search for target. And I haven't touched this script, guys, in like six months since we released it. So this is good for you guys to see how things work, how to learn on the fly, how to extend our assets. Firing, and we assign it some rules. And we basically say, hey, go ahead and, and assign it a target. Now, what happens if target is null? Well, if it's null, it's, a hand, it's handled here in the assign missile rules method. So here, the target is equal to target. So if it's null, What's telling it to go forward? Right here. If the target is null, then it becomes a normal rocket, and then it's done. All right. So what we want to do is, if target is equal to null, we only want to become, we only want to become a normal rocket if there's no more targets available. So the easiest way to do this, real quickly, is I'm going to select cube one, two, and four here, or each of these cubes. So one, two three, four, five, and hold on, we have a duplicate in here somewhere, right here. All right, so here we go, we've got all five of these. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select them all, and we're gonna give them a tag of targets, so we know how to find them. All right, and then select all the cubes, and we're gonna give it a tag of target. All right, so they all have a tag of target, and let's hop back in here. So what that means is that we can then say to them, hey, if you don't have anyone, look again. All right, so here we say target, target. And then here, if target equals null, we're gonna say, try and find a target. All right, and I don't care which one it finds, I just wanna find the first one. So all we're gonna do here is we're gonna find that first target. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that game object. So I'm gonna say here of our target equals game object find and I'm looking for that target I just want to say hey find the first one you find with a tag of target target so game object find object with tag and I think this will work find object of type would work better if they had like a script attached to them but we'll basically say hey I just want to find anyone with a tag of target and that's going to be stored in this target variable all right now if the target is null meaning that we didn't find one all right so if target is not null then what does that mean if target is not null then we found someone okay all right we found a target yay we're good um, and if it's still the case then we're gonna do this all right so here else let's default back to this that there and we should be okay 
All right, let's go ahead and save this and test it out. So by doing this, that means that I shouldn't even have to assign the initial target here. So I'm gonna go ahead here and just remove that, set it to none, because it should automatically target inside of Unity. And if it doesn't, we'll have to figure out why. All right, so we're in homing. I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. Hey, what's up, 3D Masters? Yes, this is live. We are on YouTube Live right now. Uh, Justin Horn is here. Sweet, how's it going, dude? Uh, Dreamer, can you make a cube have, say, two or three tags, or just limit to one? So by default, you can only assign them one tag. However, you could totally create your own tagging system, and you can assign them multiple tags and multiple rules. Definitely, you could you could totally create a custom solution for that uh, using just a C sharp mono behavior class. I need to note my code like you do. Uh, yes, you should be writing comments in your code. Pseudocode is always awesome. All right, so let's check this out. If this works, we should be able to destroy all five of these. We have six shots. I hit space, and it just is going. So obviously something is wrong. You can see here that the missile type is not even doing anything. It's still on homing. Um, and actually, what I want to do is I'm going to pause it on this next rocket that comes out. So hold on. Yeah, we're gonna pause it on this guy. Let's find out where he's at. See what he's doing. So here is the rocket. And you can see here that he basically is just moving if the missile launcher dot missile type is homing, then we say if target is null, we're gonna try and get it. Oh right, duh, guys, we never assigned it to target. That's why. So if target way we found a target, then we actually need to say, okay, target, which is what? What is our target? It's a transform equals the target dot transform. There you go. Could I get some help with some animation sync? I'm using pun two. Definitely the wrong stream for that. Um, that may be a question that sounds like very much so a question for Al. <laughs> All right, so let's check this out. Again, guys, we are, if you're just tuning in here, we got 50 people in here now. Um, we are hosting a game jam. It's up to you guys to pick the theme, and I'm basically demonstrating something in Filebase right now. And what you guys see here is something private. You should not see this. <laughs> this is something we're working on for our game developer certification on the third course. So where did my Unity project go? Did Unity crash? Bro, did it crash? Oh, lame. Lame. Hold on. Oh, man, how disappointing. Uh, Dark Souls like. Yeah, Dark Souls would work. We have a lot of cool stuff for Dark Souls. Um. Crap. What was I just in? Oh, guys, I don't know what project I was just in for that. Hold on. Why? I'm pretty sure I was in testing ground. For some reason, I cannot open this. Team Fortress 2? What do you see, Team Fortress 2? Also, I will let you guys speculate on everything you see here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for those who are curious, this is something we're doing for the third person, uh, for the 3D game that's part of our game developer certification. So we will have this and more coming soon. But I'm trying to figure out why I can't open Testing Ground. Dude. Hold on. I can't even open that project anymore. I'm not sure why. What happened? Look at Unity. Yeah, okay, it was de definitely testing ground. Um, weird.
Although, what? It says I'm in testing ground, but that's so false. Give me a second. Guys, I like, lost this project. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, check your task manager. That Unity project may still be open. Yeah, I'm looking in task manager. I don't see that. But where where were we in this? Hold on. Let me find this script. Copy full path. Let me see where this thinks it is. Um, let's see here. So this thinks that it is in Unity Project's testing ground. But this is Unity Project's testing ground. It like got rewritten or something. All right, it's my Unity 2020. Wait, let me shut that down. Um, so, no. no, no, the project was, uh, yeah, I'm looking now. The project was not file based, or was it? Oh shit, maybe it was actually. Did someone say file based? Here, let me reopen file based. I do have a file based scene here. Let me see what that is. Oh, file based was the name of the project. Okay, I think it is this one then. If you guys saw that it was file based, then perhaps it is this Unity project that I'm about to open. I have no clue what happened. I'm on Unity 2020.1 beta, so I'm assuming something I did crashed it. Not 100% sure what. Uh, let's check out file base and see if this is the right scene. All right, so here we go. Let's go to our downloads. Okay, it was this one. Awesome, thank you so much. Let's go back into this demo scene. Hopefully I saved, but I didn't, so that's okay though. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead here, go to the missile launcher. All right, and we're gonna add our boxes back. So we're just gonna go ahead here, create some cubes, position them here, here. All right. And then let's go in here, rename them to all have the tag of target. Cool, there you go. Make sure I save this once I do that. All right, cool. So check this out, all right? Missile launcher, missile type, homing. We should be good on the script. I'm just gonna go ahead here, let's run this and hit enter or space key and we should be good to go. They should automatically target these boxes and explode them. Um, let me see here. Someone asked, I saw something about college. So I'm completely self-taught, guys. I have been giving the middle finger to society and universities for the past 11 years. Um, let me see here. Did you learn game dev on your own or did you went to school for it? Yeah, completely self-taught. You don't need to go to school for this. I do have a degree, um, but it's not related to programming. And it's only because my wife's mother would not let me marry her without it. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can completely learn this on your own. Alright, let's see here. Sorry guys, my dog's going nuts. Someone just dropped off an Amazon package. Alright, so check this out. So we're, we're gonna hit space here and we should see that everything is looking awesome. I hit space, boom, targets one, targets two, and we can't see anymore because of our explosions, they're too awesome and targets three and everything. And then the last ones go off into the distance because there's no more targets. And you'll see here that our explosions are looping right now. So I'm not gonna fix that, but what is cool about FileBase is that when you download something that works really well with another FileBase product, we're automatically gonna download it and include it for you. If you wanna swap it out later, you can. But check this out. On the missiles themselves, we have all the missiles. So here, we have the missile launcher, which holds basically the missiles. And if we look at those missiles, um, let me see here, if we look at the prefab for the actual missile, check this out. It has an explosion prefab, 
which is part of this explosion here. So it downloads automatically the asset called main explosion, which is part of the file based system. So if we actually look for explosion, the explosion it's downloading, it recognized, hey, this asset needs this required piece. And so it's automatically going to download that explosion particle main explosion for you. So it's really cool that we have a ton of assets that work together and we handle that for you. So I don't need to get, hey, I don't need the individual rockets. If you download the turret, it's automatically going to download the missile. And you'll see that these missiles are individual missiles. You know, these are their own. You can actually just get these on the store themselves, um, but it's going to put them for you as well. So and then if you have VFX that go with it, we're going to give you those. If we have sound effects that go with it, we're also going to give you those pre-attached. So it's pretty neat. Um, how much time I need to learn to use Unity alone? It's not a, a matter of time. It's not a race. It's a marathon. You know, this is something that you should want to do. It's always, you're always learning. Um, you learn programming as you go. You know, nobody starts off with 11 years of experience, uh, which is pretty exciting to say. I'm going on 11 years now. Um, it's a journey and I'm always learning something new every single day. It's about constantly working at your skill and wanting to get better, wanting to turn this into a career for yourself. So what we're doing here, guys, because we've got tons of new people in here, I see, um, is we are hosting a game jam from now to April 5th and we're using Filebase to build that game in the game jam. Um, what I need your help with though is deciding on a theme for this game jam and you have to use assets from Filebase. So Filebase has over 3,000 game assets now that are yours to keep and we want you to build your games using them. And this is an opportunity for us to figure out where our weak spots are in Filebase by using this game jam so that we can tell our artists to pump the brakes on what our roadmap is and focus on what you guys need. So here we go. Um, so let's see here. Um, we're gonna go through Filebase, and what I want you guys to do is start throwing out some themes that we see here. All right, so I think there's something cool about these keys and gems here. I don't know how we could use those. Those are just typical collectible items that they could be in a game. Um, I believe we were last time we got some choppers. It's annoying, I gotta fix that sometimes. Sometimes, I'm not sure what triggers that, but sometimes it crashes. It's an N95. Nice. Why are you wasting it? No, not just something. No, you're wasting it. Not, not <laughs> uh, I only have three years and I'm working on a game like Top Gun, but all hard coded. Nice. Uh, let's see. Let's continue. Let's go through here. And if you guys are interested in signing up for Filebase, we're offering a special pricing of COVID 19. You can sign up for 99 bucks a year. That's literally, I think, $1.90 a week to get access to over 3,000 game assets. And we do add 20 to 40 new game assets each week. So you can sign up, just use that code COVID-19. And you'll be able to participate in our game jam. Um, our game jam is giving away cash prizes as well for those who participate and use Filebase to build their game or whatever it is that you want to make in a week. But what we need to focus on is our theme. So let's go back to all assets here. We we're on five, six. All right, weird. Keeps crashing on a uh, six for some reason. Let me see if that is consistent. Go to all assets. Okay, not sure what that is. All right, so you can see here we got some characters, explosions. We got an airliner here, some wooden barrels, a lot of windows, a wall clock, ventilation generator. Um, let's see here. If we go through it this way, you can see here that each row is going to show me what? 4, 4, 8, 12. So we got 16 options every time. There's over 3,000 game assets here. So we're not going to do that. There's over 1,000 packs that will hit. So someone's throw out a, a word, a, a genre, or like a keyword for an item that you think would be interesting around a theme or something like that. And we'll see if we what we have around it. For example, I think we recently did a theme of a game jam for money. So if you type money, you know, we have treasure chests, silver bars, gold bars, ATMs, bags of cash, um, bills, briefcases, things like that. Let's try it that way. What uh, what themes do you guys have? And check out these, uh, check out this ATM here. That's just a bag of money. I wanna see what that looks like. I'm just gonna download that. Can you tell us if it's possible to make games with only assets and no code? Yeah, definitely. There's a ton of no code solutions out there. 
Um, what we train uh, really well at Game Dev HQ is software engineers. So, you know, we're focused on coding, um, but you don't have to learn it if you don't want to. You can make a game without it. It's harder for sure, I think, if you can do at least some coding or what a lot of people call like um, programmer art, I think it is, or like art programmer. Um, it's good enough. You know, that's what Al is. Al knows enough programming to get by now. Like, he can prototype his own stuff. He doesn't need me to do it. Yeah, definitely. Bolt is a good one. Playmaker is a good one. You know, I, I personally hate those tools, um, but I see the value in them for people that don't want to learn to code. Uh, let's see. Darkness lies opposite a lone one light. <laughs> Annabelle. Ooh, Annabelle's interesting. Theme, only Owl's Grunt. Interesting. What is Owl's Grunt? Is that our grunt? When Owl streams, my favorite thing that Owl does is when he's looking for something, he goes, I think it's like, uh, I'm blanking on it now, of course, but when he's looking for stuff, he goes, do, 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 like something like that, <laughs> I think. I think that's along the lines of it. All right, let's see. Someone throw out some keywords that we can look up here. Escape. So I think we looked at escape before, and we have nothing on escape. I, I downloaded this money bag. I want to see what that looks like in the scene. Let's go ahead and put this money bag here. How does that look? Does that look like legit cash coming out of there? Oh, it does. Look at that. Look at those dollar bills. That's pretty cool. Al's mop. <laughs> so it's funny. I It's funny. Al does have a mop in here. And this mop right here. Let's download that. What else we got? Once we download that, let's locate it, put it in the scene. All right, guys. And I can't stress how awesome it is when you're using Filebase. Um, to have the ability for us to just manage there's that awesome up to us manage your assets like it's so easy Just go to your downloads and you'll see them all here, right? I don't have to re go through my project I can just highlight whatever it is. I'm looking for right we highlight it in yellow So it's nice and bright for you to see click on it and drag it into your scene that simple Ooh, This looks good. Oh man, you could totally up the emissions on this and have it glow Check that out. Uh, if we go to the material, um, where's the emissions on this thing? Does it not have an emissions channel? Oh, here we go. No? Intensity? No? Wait, I don't know why that's not glowing. I'll have to ask Al how emissions work. I haven't done emission stuff in like a year. Uh, let's see, the five star mop. <laughs> that is, I think it's funny. So that rating system, I'm pretty sure the rating system, we, we had ideas for it in the past, but I'm pretty sure Al was testing it around and he rated it five stars on Game Dev HQ as a test. Um, and gave like something as cool as like a weapon, like an AK-47 or something like that. Um, Speaking of which, do we not have an AK-47? We totally do, yeah. I think you rated this like three stars, <laughs> but the mop is five. I think you need post-processing to get the glow to really show. Yeah, I think you are absolutely right, the bloom setting or something. Um, let's see here, what do we got? What's a word? Um, let's type in jar. So here we got interior plants, a jar of tree, uh, teeth, a jar of red fluid, jar of eyeballs. Um, let's type in bone. Alright, got some cool axes here. Skull, skeleton, a bone brick pack. It's pretty interesting. Um, if you guys ever played RuneScape, we don't have anything RuneScape. We should have that as a tag, but it's really, I think it's medieval. I'm not sure how to spell that. Is it medieval? Or is it like med? I think it's medieval, right? Oh my god, how do I spell medieval? God damn it. <laughs> how do you spell medieval? Someone type out how I spell that word, please. 
Um, search for environments. Yeah, so we got a whole thing here for environments. These are the ones that Al has built live and he puts them on here. Uh, or we can go to environments and we can browse through this. So we got different themes. What theme do we want to check out? Let's check out, um, let's check out the fantasy ones. See if there's any RuneScape inspired stuff. Oh, you could create some cool dungeons with this, guys. Yeah, I think one day I'll do a live stream of creating like RuneScape again, maybe. I don't know. Maybe a course, probably not. You know, one of the things we're, we're actually getting away from, guys, is being, uh, we're not a course library. It's not my job to show you how to make games. It's my job to teach you how to make games. If you just follow along, then it's pretty useless, you know? You don't need me to show you. You need me to give you the logic problem solving skill set so that you can make an RPG yourself. You don't need to watch me make one. Uh, let's see, medieval. Okay, here we go. Someone spelt that correctly. Let's try it out. All right, here we go. We're gonna say M E D I E V A L. That sounds about right. Yes, good job. Thank you. All right, so check this out. So if I was creating RuneScape today, this is gonna be my sweet spot. So check all out. Check this out. Like so many cool stuff here. Got knight armor, weapons, magic stuff like staffs. Remember, like if you guys played RuneScape, all the mages and stuff. Oh, dude, so cool. Nostalgia. Um, dude, some of these staffs are like super awesome. Like you can get a cool bloom effect on this and just cast spells. But geeking out over here over this. I'm gonna download that. <laughs> um, let's see here. What else do we got? Let's go back. We got uh, some swords, some daggers, some like, what are these called? Uh, they're actually not called axes. These were called like halberds, I believe, aren't they? They're actually called halberds, I believe. We got maces. You guys remember those like two-handed swords? Like this looks like a two-handed axe. Um, look at that, gauntlets and stuff. I mean, man, we, we got so much cool stuff coming. This was all pretty much RuneScape inspired stuff that I was like, let's get this and this and this. Uh, but then it turned out that <laughs> I was the only one who was making RuneScape stuff, so we stopped doing that because other people were building other things. So if you guys start building more MMO related things, preferably close to RuneScape, we'll get more of those assets on the store. Um, let's see, most of my games use old school RuneScape models for test props. Nice. Yeah, I love old school RuneScape. Uh, fantasy. What do we got for fantasy? Let me know if you guys are thinking of themes for this jam. So if we go to environments, we go to, let's see, environments, fantasy. Yeah, okay, we went through those. Let's look at uh, props for fantasy. Actually, I don't know if props work that way. Yeah, so props, we have tools, weapons, furniture. Um, let's go through tools. So we got some scrolls, we got keys, we got gems, wooden crates, wooden barrels, water cooler, washer dryer units, torches, that's pretty cool. Lock picks, got locks for the lock picks. Got some shovels, got some silver bars, a screwdriver, first aid assets, that's pretty cool. Ooh, actually, look at the medical. You know what? Let's type in medical. It's actually not a bad idea. Hold on. Let's look at all the medical stuff. Why? Everything there should be tagged. Um, open med kits. That's pretty dope. Let's check that out. So this is actually going to download three assets that I think you can get individually. They're kit 01, kit 02, and kit 03. Um, and if we go to the scene here, we can just pop those in. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see what drugs we got. That there and here. Oh, dude, check that out. That's pretty cool. So we got some health first aid stuff there. Not sure what that is. Bag of blood stuff, maybe. I'm not sure. Very cool. All right, let's check out some more medical stuff. So if I go back here, what were we on? We were on tools, right? What was that? That was a, uh, maybe a medicine? First aid assets. Hold on, where are the tags on this guy? Can't see the tags. 
try med. Ah, uh, too broad. Because medieval's getting into the tags. Weird. Uh, nurse. Alright, we got metal drawers. Doctor. Test tubes, doctor stool, metal drawers. What about blood? Got jars of red fluid. What about trap? E cape? Escape? Oh, mouse trap, not bad. Oh, hospital, thank you. Yeah, let's try that one. Hospital. Alright, so here we go. So, padded cells, we got hospital interiors, got some doors. Huh. Yeah, let's go back to the tools. What was I looking up before? Okay, here we go. So, we got all these first aid kits. Oh, aid. I didn't do that one, did I? Oh, I did. Oh, weird. That was all that came back. Huh. All right, let's keep going. We've got military crates, fire extinguishers. Maybe we actually didn't have that much medicine stuff. Um, weirdly, okay, we do have some water stuff. We got a bunch of pool assets. We got a torch, some wooden crates, keys, and then cubicle dividers. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I was thinking about an escape room. You have a lot of assets that would be good for that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we have tons of stuff to create escape room. We actually are working on an escape room project right now uh, using Firebase. It's pretty neat. Uh, let's see, the violence are under hospital, I think. Unconventional weapons, like a gun that shoots other guns or a five-star mop that works like a lightsaber. Oh, dude, Carlos, win right there. Unconventional weapons, my thought would be like a shotgun that's shooting toilet paper. Um, fantastic, let me actually look at that. Let's, type, let's search the weapons. So we go to props. We look at weapons. We got 235 weapons. We can create a Tommy gun of toy toilet paper. Um, we got suppressors. It'd be cool to create like a modification system with the weapons. Like uh, if you guys are playing like Blackout or uh, PUBG style. We got range scopes here, muzzle brakes, axes, cannons, sledgehammers. Put like toilet paper at the top of that. TP, that's like a pistol that shoots diamonds. Save the TP. <laughs> yeah, dude, I think, we, I think we're on to something here. Um, all right, so, so far we got unconventional weapons with a hard press for toilet paper. So, let's see, that's like a pistol that shoots diamonds. Save the TP, that's awesome. Um, yeah, we got the diamonds, right? We got all that cool stuff. The gems you can be firing off. Um, let's see here, we got some sabers. Let's see, magical swords. These are pretty neat. Sci-fi plazas. Shields. Now we're getting to this medieval stuff. There we go, dragon off. Man, this used to be like I think my favorite gun in um what is the dragon off from? Dragon off is not recent. That is from like an uh I mean it's it's a it's a legit gun, but this was in what was that in? This was like Call of Duty 3 or something like that, this gun. It was insane. I have not seen a Dragunov recently in video games. Let me know if you guys have. Um, we got ammo boxes. All this cool stuff here. A Zastava. Got a pocket knife. Desert Eagle. RPG. Scars. Dude, we got some really violent weapons here. Jesus. Um, let's see here, we got an MP5, minigun, that's exciting, minigun full of toilet paper, medieval, swords, M60s, a mace, we got a mallet. You know, I want to check out some of these guns here, I want to see, uh, we have a C4 and detonator, we actually created on our YouTube channel, you can find a tutorial on how to create a C4 detonator using this asset, it's pretty neat. Uh, check out this G36 with a clip. Dude. Oh, that's a dope gun. Look at that. Um, we got a FAMAS. Colt revolver, a barrette. Nice. Uh, unconventional treasures. Not bad. Mr. Rochefort. How's it going? 
Uh, let's see here. ACOG sni scope, sniper rifle, AT4. Oh, this could be cool. Could create a homing missile system with that. Um, let's see. All right, so that is all the weapons. What is your favorite of these weapons? Let me see here. Let's look at the guns. These all look so good. I like these sci-fi ones. Like, right, look at this one. Sci-fi handgun. This is a cool looking gun. Let's talk about that. Import. Alright, locate it. And let's put it in. Oh, dude, that is a pretty looking gun. Check that out. Dude, check this out. Look that keeps the ammo on the side. Oh, man, that is cool. Let's look at this. So this... Oh, lame. I'll have to talk to Al about this. Hold on. I'm pretty sure that that there is built into the texture of the gun, which I'm not sure if that's a big deal or not, but... Although the clip that... Oh, dude, that's cool. Check this out. The clip comes out, so I can, like cock it back in so the clip comes out uh, but this texture is hard coded to say 9037 whatever that means maybe that wasn't intended to be the ammo count if it is though I would love to be able to customize that uh, but man it's a sweet gun pick up this on the floor and then shove it in there nice uh, do we have any cyberpunk weapons or themed items? Great question. What is cyber? How do you define what cyberpunk is? Because I would think so, right? Like, isn't cyberpunk kind of like sci-fi weapons? Because we have these sci-fi weapons here, like this pulse rifle. I think cyberpunk when I see this, like razor nails. Oh, that stuff. Okay, so yeah, we do. Check this out. We got some like hard-hitting, apocalyptic. Uh, if we type razor. Oh, I'm surprised they don't show up, actually. Is it Razor? Nope. Um, if we look at some of our bats, we have some crazy bats. Yeah, look at this. Like, this is steampunk or steampunk, right? Cyberpunk. We got, like, these bats with screws in them. Um, or, like, a baseball bat with a chainsaw mill on it. <laughs> or a sawmill on it. We have this one here, metal one with spikes. Just, like, very uh, Mad Max style. <laughs> that is pretty neat. Uh, give me a second, guys. I'm just going to check something on the Discord that I'm getting pinged about. Hold on. Uh, if there's any other assets you guys want to see, let me know. Let's throw out some more theme suggestions if you have them. Otherwise, I think so far we have a good winner, which is unconventional weapons. I like that a lot. We have tons of cool weapons in file base. What's really cool as well is if you want to use these, here's how easy it is to get started with a game like this. Say you, let's pick a weapon we want to actually play with. So for example, let's go down here and let's say that we actually like um, this rifle, right? And actually, even, even before I even download the weapon I want to use, Check this out. We can actually go to home. Let's go to extensions. We already have an FPS player sample, which will give you that shotgun there, which you can download by default, or you can download it with this character controller. Um, or you can actually download a first person controller uh, or a FPS character controller for dungeon, whatever this one was. This is something Al was doing. But uh, this one here, if we actually just download this, this will give you a ready to go shotgun. Uh, that's all hooked out, hooked up, decked out. This is from a free zombie course that we offer. Uh, but you can download this, and then what's really neat is you can actually just swap out the gun with whatever you want from file base. So if we take a look here, we can go to file base, locate that. Let's put that in the scene. All right, and this requires the lightweight render pipeline or the universal render pipeline. That's why it's currently uh, 
pink. Uh, but what he does allow us to do is we should be able to just walk around. So I'm going to delete the main camera. And you'll see here it's complaining because I believe it's looking for a zombie, which is part of the free course we have. So if I just open this up, I'm just going to remove anything that it's looking for related to enemy. All right. Let's hop back in here. Hey, what's going on, John Nix? All right, so that compiled. I'm going to put this console back down here. If it will let me. OK. So with these uh, ready-made things, if I upgrade to the universal render pipeline, this guy will no longer be pink. It will automatically fix his textures. But uh, it's going to be a few minutes to download that, so I'm just going to go with it. But we have a ready-to-go character, and I can fire and everything like that. Everything is good to go. Right now, it's animations are not hooked up, just because this is really part of like a, uh, a starter course we have. And I think it's missing things. Uh, but if you follow that course, you'll get set up in 15 minutes on how to use this guy. Alternatively, though, if we didn't want to do that, um, we can take this character, delete that one, and we can actually download our first person one, which is ready to go. So let me open up Filebase, let's download our FPS. So we got tons of these extensions coming out, guys. We have so many of these that are in production that just haven't been pushed yet. Um, but we are going to be filling up this store to where if you don't want to learn to code, if you're an artist first, um, you'll be able to use these extensions to build your games pretty quickly. So let's check this out. All right, see it's on box. All right, so here we go. Um, we just downloaded that. So let's go to our scripts, our downloads. You'll see here, first person controller. Grab that, put it in our scene, and pop them in. And there we go. We are now good to go. We have a first person character controller that we can fully control. And you'll see here I can run around. I can run. I can actually crouch. I can do all sorts of cool stuff. Um, we got head bobbing going on. And now you're ready to go. So if I want to, I can just parent a weapon or I can basically child a weapon to this character. And we have our gun. That's exactly how our, our FPS sample project was made is using this controller. Um, what's really neat is you can easily modify this. So it has the script here. And all you have to do is read the settings. You can set your walk speed, your run speed, which is left shift by default, your gravity, your jump height, your crouching status, um, whether or not your head bobbing settings, how smooth it is, your walk frequency, your run frequency, your head offset, your camera look sensitivity, all of that stuff done for you. And again, if you want to learn how to write this script from scratch, every single line is commented. So pretty neat. All of our extensions will always be like that. There's a theme generator apparently, and one of the themes that popped up was Death is Useful. Ooh, I like that. That's a cool theme. You know, I've seen um I've seen one game where death is the feature of the game. It's like you had to like like for example, um it's called it's called Res Please. If you guys have heard of that, I actually met these guys, um, super, super talented developers, completely self-taught using Unity. Um it's called Reds Please. Check this out. And you have to, death is the actual, um, death is like part of the game. So you have to actually like kill yourself to let your partner uh, complete something. So for example, you might have to cross lava and one of you have to sacrifice yourself so that the other can step on you to make it to the end. And then you can respawn that person. So it's pretty neat. You have to solve puzzles by, by, uh, by killing yourself. So this is Red's Plays, really, really slick game. It plays like super well. So check this out, hopefully this trailer will show it. You can see here, you can like do all sorts of cool stuff with controlling. And you have to work together to solve puzzles. And then he just like pushed him off and he can resurrect his partner. So he has to kill him, step on him to complete the puzzle and then you can resurrect your partner. Really, really unique and cool. Um, truly, this is the first game that I saw that had a mechanic where you had to think about death uh, to play. It was really, really cool. All
Hey, that's the theme of my zombie shooter, zombie fleet. You collect body parts to rebuild yourself. Very cool. They did a really good job on that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Res Plays was awesome. It's two guys. One's the programmer and one's the artist. They're brothers. So I don't know whatever happened to their project, but I saw their game and played it um, a year ago in person. And it was it was really cool. Um, all right. Let's see. All right, guys. So what are we thinking here? Are we doing um, also, guys? Just for those who care, devlogging done right is this guy. Danny is like the king of of a devlog done right. So if you want to make it in this industry, look at Danny's channel and do what he's doing. You know, a little corny and stuff, but man, his channel is filled with just like impressive stuff of pushing yourself and documenting it. All right, so let's drop that. Also, guys, right now, um, I think we are, I think we're good so far on the theme. I think everyone agrees that unconventional weapons with a strong push, not requirement, but strong push towards toilet paper would be exciting. Um, so the rules for this jam are that you have to use Filebase. Now, if, and we are giving away cash prizes to winners. If you are new to Filebase, you can download it. There are a few free assets available, but if you want access to over 3,000 game assets, you can use the code COVID-19 at checkout to get a license to Filebase for a year uh, for $99. All right, and that's literally $1.90 a week to access all these game assets. We had 20 to 40 each week. We do live workshops using these assets every week, coding on Thursday and love for design on Tuesday. So if you guys are interested in joining this jam and using Filebase, then pick up a copy while it's available. And we'll have more news coming out about this theme, but I think we're going to go with unconventional weapons. So the jam starts now and goes till April 5th. I'm going to be sending out a mass mail to our community, um, as well as posting it in our mastermind group if you're there. And then we can go from there. So if you guys have any other questions, I will sit around for a few minutes to answer them. Otherwise, I'm going to get this posted, make sure that the, everyone knows the rules for this jam. The only rules that you have to use uh, file base and it's unconventional weapons is the theme. All right. Uh, do we have a Discord? Yes, we do have a Discord. You can join Discord at gamedevhq.com slash Discord. I'll put that link here. gamedevhq.com slash Discord. If you purchase a license to Filebase, you do get access to our mastermind group, which invites you to code workshops on Thursdays using these assets. So we might cover things like farming systems or how to create a grenade, um, destructibles. We create code workshops on Thursdays only for Filebase users. So, and to get access to that, you have to be a member. Uh, are we allowed to adjust the file-based assets in Blender if needed? Yeah, definitely. You can do whatever you want. You can take these assets, ex export them into Blender, modify them, bring them back in. The only requirement, yeah, you get the FBX. You can do whatever you want. Um, the only requirement for this jam is that you are using the assets from file-based. So if you download it from file-based and then modify it, that's totally fine. That's good. That's what we want. We want people to do that. Um, what we're interested in is knowing where did you where did you go to look for something and it wasn't there? You know, for example, when you start building your game, get some inspiration, start building it, and then you're gonna be like, hey, you know what? I wanna put an ATM here. So you're gonna think, okay, let me search for an ATM. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for where did you miss something? Because when you search here, you'll see if I type in ATM, we don't have something. But maybe you're looking for something unique, like for example, a busted pipe. You know, and we don't have a busted pipe, but if you look here, we probably do because we have rusty pipes and we have a whole bunch of pipes yet you could use probably. Um, but if you were looking for something specific, like maybe it was a busted pipe, which actually looks like maybe that's what this is, or it's a fire sprinkler. Um, but that's what we want to know. What is it that you searched for that we're missing that you were trying to build so that we can put it on the store? That simple. So thanks for uh, watching, guys. If you have any questions, make sure you do join the Discord. We have tons of... Uh, discussions on there and announcements um, and then if you sign up for Filebase you'll get an email invite to the mastermind group where on Thursdays we do our live coding workshops which is just for pro members um, and again guys you get 30 over 3,000 almost 3,500 assets now on Filebase so it's an insane deal and we will have information about the prizes and everything like that on our mastermind group we are doing cash prizes for this and I think we're gonna be giving away a few other goodies so 
stay tuned for that. But all right, guys, if there's no other questions, I will see you soon. The title was perfect for that game. Um, I'm going to answer a couple more questions here. Let me see. Uh, SFX and music outside of file base is fine, right? So when it comes to SFX and music, I would say yes. Anything, yes. I would say SFX and music is fine. We do have some. Uh, if you look here, we have audio. I don't know what's available. Let's take a look. Like, we have Al's Grunts. Oh my god, we actually have Al's Grunts. That's so funny. Um, Torchfire, Metal Gate Open, Footsteps, Dripping Cave, Metal Door. Uh, and actually, you know what? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say all assets have to be used for file base. This is good. What sound effect were you looking for that we need to create and commission out? You know, and that's how we get these sound effects. So, no, we're going to we're gonna use you to help build up our file base library of audio. So, you'll have to make use of what you see here. And I think we should have, um, if you download the, and wait, I'm actually not seeing it here. We do have a shotgun SFX, which can be used for bullets and guns. Oh yeah, okay, here it is, shotgun SFX. Um, we may, I may rush Al to put something on here for like a generic gun, um, but for the most part, everyone can start off with a shotgun SFX sound, I'd say. Um, Adam Bradley says, okay, I see uh, the title is perfect. Thanks, Jonathan. Love your old tutorials. Yo, Sanator. Thank you. Uh, tagged you in Discord fan builds. Good deal. Yeah, and you guys are more than welcome to team up and build something awesome. So again, the theme is unconventional weapons. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and say with that is a push for unconventional weapons. Um, hashtag toilet paper. But toilet paper is going to be optional. <laughs> Um, Adam Bradley, all games about the same music then. So interesting point. <coughs> um, I don't actually think we have, like what, what, what are these sound effects here? Let's, let's download the sound effects. I'm not too concerned if everyone has the same audio and music and stuff like that, because the visuals could be so, the mechanics and the visuals could be so different on people's ideas. Uh, but let's take a look at what this sound is, because I have no idea. What is that? You guys hear that? It's like OF. Oh, dude, that's that PT demo shit. That's like where like that woman appears and she's just freaking out, probably. Oh, hard pass, dude. That's so scary. Wow, hard no. All right, let's get this buzz here. Can you guys hear those sound effects, by the way? Alright, let's check this out. So let's locate that one. Electrical buzz. Can you guys hear these sound effects when I play them? Uh, hard no. Okay, we do have zombie music, which is for the zombie sample project. Ah, <laughs> that's awesome, Wolf. <laughs> Objective was to get the loan or the TP. That's awesome. Uh, that one we can. Let's see here. Let me look at this. Okay, so this is an option. All right, that one's an option. Um, let's see what else we got. Shotgun SFX. We have rain exteriors, footsteps, knock woods, dripping cave. A wild animal scream. I was grunts. Let's download Al's grunts here. <laughs> what? Oh my god, there's so many grunts. What is he doing? Alright, let's check that out. <gasps> nice. Oh my god, I can just picture Al yelling this stuff into a mic. That is so funny. So great. Dude, these are awesome. These are for like you jumping up and down and shit. That's a death one. Ah, I only hope his kids and wife are watching him record this. So great. Huh. <laughs> 17 grunt noises. That is insane. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. 
All right, guys. So again, theme is unconventional weapons, and this is for file-based users only, guys. So thank you everyone for watching and for helping us decide what this theme is. I'm going to be writing up a mailer and sending it out right now to everyone as well as announcing it on Discord. So again, guys, for 99 bucks a year, you can get access to everything Game Dev HQ, our courses, our live workshops, our mastermind group, and all of these game assets and more using the code COVID-19. All right, guys, I will catch you all later and on Discord.